Okay, so, um, you haven't seen it, but I've tried redrawing this character about four times, or I've tried drawing this character about four times, uh, and it has not yet been successful, um, so I keep deleting that layer and going back. I figured that seeing a drawing and then erasing it a bunch of times would not necessarily do the audience uh, any good, but know that that has happened. If you think I don't make a great deal of mistakes, I do. It takes a while. Um... I draw him smiling here just because, you know, this is, he, he is a little more confident in his uh, situation than he was in the book in which he debuted, uh, Krogan's Vengeance, who's a young man there, very reluctant to uh, engage in a life of piracy. Um, but, you know, now he's a lot, you know, it's ten years later, he's been, been a privateer for ten years, um, and has a great deal of confidence. I want him to be sort of that cocky, enthusiastic pirate. Um, uh, so, throw a shirt in here. Now, the problem with this is that uh, I don't even know which leg he's supposed to be doing anything with. So I'm going to go back to the underdrawing. And... make it very clear what it is that I'm needing to do. Voila! Okay, now that part works, but for it to work, he's way too small. So... Oh man, okay, so I put, didn't make a new layer when I made him, I need to do that. Copy him, whoops. Delete him and paste it, okay. So now I have a little bit more control, I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. Um, Still keep him up roughly where he is, but there we go. Okay, that feels a lot better. I'm going to have to forget most of this cape thing because, in fact, you know what? He's, he's not even going to be wearing a cape. Um... Although it creates, or not a cape, it's a jacket. Although it creates a nice visual element, I don't think that it'll, it'll work. I will throw a vest on him that mimics the, uh, the look of the cape, or the mimic the look of the jacket. Uh, even though it's not, you know, his actual costume, and I know that a lot of people get bugged when they have like a movie, you know, a comic cover or a movie poster or whatever else where the character is not actually on model. Uh... Yeah, tough. Um, it's going to be better compositionally, so that's that's what's important. This is just meant to get people to watch, read it, whatever else. That hand wasn't the best, so try it again. Okay, uh, hold my hand out, get a look at it. There we go. Okay. Um, I think that his his uh, bigness is coming through a lot more clearly this time around than uh, than before. As I mentioned, ten years have passed since the events of uh, Krogan's Vengeance, uh, and he's gone from being either a a young man or an old boy to being very much a regular adult male. Um, at this point, I guess he's still a, a few years younger than me. Um, if he's you know, between 18 and 20 there, he's between, you know, 28 and 30 here. Um, although life on the seas would, would uh, likely harden you up a little bit. I'm 32 at the the point that I'm writing this, or discussing this. Uh, so I'll throw his boots in there. Those are still pretty lousy legs, so I'm going to scrap this whole bit of business here. Make his waist significantly smaller. 
lose that arm in the background here. Um, I'm usually not all that happy with a, a drawing when it's first happening, and so I'll make a lot of tweaks to it. Um, my final art, I rarely make tweaks to, but I figure I can afford to be, you know, quote-unquote happy with set art, provided that I spend enough time on revisions in the early stages, in the underdrawing. Um, as long as I do that, it makes it to where when I finally do get sit down and do my finals, those finals are done. Um, there's no more revision work. So all my revision work is always done up front, which is why it takes me forever to do, to plan a project, you know, whether it be writing, whether it be the underdrawing, penciling, whatever else. Um, but disproportionately little time actually executing it. Um, and that, you know, may speak poorly of my final work. I like to think that, you know, regardless of, I, you know, I work as fast or as slow as I'm able to do, um, and they tend to be the same. Uh, so the, the only difference is the amount of time uh, that I put into a, a project. Uh, if I, you know, have a crazy deadline, it's not that I work faster, it's just that I work more in a in a shorter period of time. Um, it's pretty close, but it's not quite there. I do like the body and waist a lot more this time. Um, I'm going to lose that leg entirely because I want that leg to swing from over here. There we go. He's got this very high boot. Um, I was in uh, Pirates of Penzance in college, and the uh, our uh, our pirate king, who was played by a guy named Matt, uh, had these impossibly tall boots uh, that I always really kind of dug. Um, still not good. Uh, my underdrawing is flawed, which is where the the problem lies. Uh, again, not having thumbnails this time around is doing me a disservice. Okay, so, there we go, so, oh, okay, um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, although I, you know, claimed to have done this before, I did still a pretty lousy job of it, I'm going to go in and get rid of the legs and that underdrawing. And I'm going to see if I can make something that's a little bit stronger. So uh, let me figure out where my hip would be here. Because his body is turning. So he's got that swoop turn. So to show the volume there, this is kind of how that volume would be. Um, so he's twisting. I, I kind of like that. That, that works. Um, thinking volumetrically a lot of times will help with an otherwise weak composition, understanding of what your story should be. There we go. Now he's kind of got this like dancey quality to him. His name is Catfoot after all, so I think having that nimble approach. You know, the knees are bent. It looks like he might jump. Urgh, I don't like that back leg. Um, I just you know, said, hey, I like this, but I lied. Um, I kind of like the uh, the crossed leg approach, um, that it gives a sense that he still is light on his feet, but it's kind of dancing. There we go, that's much better. It's kind of, you know, Tim Roth doing a step behind and Rob Roy, um, you know, while he's fencing. Uh, I can buy that. Okay. So this is, this is coming along. Um, Still not the world's best, but it's not the world's worst. So let me go back up to the uh, the figure here. Throw those extremely skinny legs there. Got the the high boots. And although I'll be blackening those in, I'm going to leave some degrees of light to showcase that volume. So um, it's probably a good idea for me to leave that there to where that can be seen. Um, and actually, this is going to get lost because it's creating tangents right there. Um, 
if you don't know what I mean by tangents, um, I wrote a uncomfortably long uh, essay slash tutorial about him, I guess. Oh, now he's like, he's ice skating. This is, see, this um, clearly takes a while. Uh, better, but it's not clear that this is supposed to be his rear end and not his front. Um, so I need to make that clear. So He's wearing pants, um, so that makes it to where... Gah. Nope, you know what? He's not twisting anymore at all. Um, so, you can see I'm very indecisive here. Not Gonna have him running with that curved ground plane, and the fact that he's more or less running towards the camera. This is getting dangerously close to a Liefeldian uh, design here. It's not that I mind drawing feet. I actually kind of love drawing feet. I used to hate it, but then I don't know. I started looking a lot at the work of uh, Tom Fowler and. Uh, Jack Davis, Andrew Robinson, Chris Bruner, they all do great feet. And I got kind of hooked on drawing feet, so now I totally love it. Ah, you know what? Yeah, he's running at the camera. Um, it'll make him appear a little more dynamic. He's dynamic as heck in this story, so that's not an issue. Um, however, what is an issue is his scale. I do want to show his feet, or at least the foot that's running forward at the... Uh, at the bad guy here, and for that to work, I need to have a little bit more room, so. Showcase where the knee would be. There we go. That's just silly. Okay. Um, but I do like this. I do like that bit of business. Let's throw a smoke cloud up there or a dust cloud. I'm a huge fan of dust clouds to indicate movement, uh, object leaving the ground, whatever it might be. Throw a bit of a heel on there. Hmm. Uh, sorry to be so slow here to talk. Again, I'm just kind of thinking, looking at this stuff. This is okay. I, I'm moving in the right direction. Still not great. And I'm not going to throw that dust cloud down until after I have the leg up because that's going to affect the composition. And the uh, the leg is going to be more difficult to get right than the, uh, than the cloud. So, that being the case, cloud becomes secondary. So, one, two, three. The sound of my chair moving, uh, doing that because I'm standing up, getting a sense for the pose, getting a sense for uh, what the leg would be doing here. Uh, too, I hate to use the word cartoony because this whole thing is cartoony, but it's too uh, slapstick a leg, it's too walk cycle. Um, I don't know exactly how to put it. I'm going to figure out. Again, the anatomy there. Ah, that's the ticket. The leg needs to come more forward. See, um, I, 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 and I'm sure probably a lot of other people have a, a bad habit of, uh, and not a lot of other people, me. Um, I have a bad habit of allowing the mass created by clothing because it is such a part of the, uh, the composition to trick me into not doing an anatomical underdrawing. Um, 
That's a lot better. There we go. Now I can throw that clothing mass on there and it'll still work. Huzzah! Okay. Um, all right. I'm starting to finally find the drawing in here. Um, and it has only taken like 20 something minutes. Uh, so now this is a problem because that leg is coming forward. So the, the, uh, the, the, shape that the upper part of that boot was creating where it was like this uh, was wrong. Um, I'm actually still, even though this leg is coming forward sort of, um, I still need to be looking at it from above. This one I'm looking at it from below because the top of this boot curves this way. This one I'm looking at from above so the top of the boot curves that way. That makes it to where now I've got a clear sense as to what the volume of those, those leg bits are. Um, we'll throw a little bit of sash back here, and now, there we go, now I've got the boots, and I am finally happy with Catfoot here. Um, but Catfoot is, as is evident, only a very small part of this composition, so we've still got a ways to go. I can see why people, when they do these sketches, do them on four times as fast, because uh, for this image, this is, you know, if I include inking and everything else, this is going to be a an extremely long uh, video. Okay, so now I'm going to do the next part, which is uh, Admiral Montero. So here's Catlett, pretty pleased with him, still throwing a couple more volume indicators uh, just for, for later, for my own notification. Um, so that I don't forget, do it wrong, whatever it might be. Um, it's going to help in the color, too, just keeping my mind wrapped around it. When I do a uh, cell shading, it's going to add here to these these volume lines. Um, okay, uh, so now, I'll draw this character. Put his hands like this. Okay. Downside with drawing with your right hand is that if your character is right-handed, You've got a... Oh wait, he's got gloves. So, no fingernail. So there's going to be, basically for, for this type of rapier that he'd be using, there'll be a cup hilt over a crossbar like this. Um, so, uh, need his hand to look roughly like this. I didn't really need to do that because I'm familiar enough with the... Uh, with the... the the way that that grip is utilized. Um, I can't fence worth a darn unless I have a bar to hold on to. If my finger isn't hooked on there, uh, I've got no control, I've got no wrist action. So as a rule, I tend to make it to where if my characters are doing anything other than broadsword fighting, they've always got that finger grip, something to hold on to, just because it's easier for me to wrap my own head around. Um, okay, so there we go. Um, now he's got these gloves, and the glove ends in this big, flowy uh, cuff here, which I doubt would be actually attached to the glove. Um, I'm just kind of winging it when it comes to his design and just sort of, rather than doing a great deal of research, I'm, I'm basing it more or less off my own memories of what a, uh, a late 16, early 1700 Spanish pseudo-military outfit might look like. Um, looking at paintings, I think, when I first was, was looking at this sort of thing. Um, and but being as I'm just doing a few images here and there for this particular project, I'm not actually doing panel to panel storytelling. It's it's easier for me to get away with the not not knowing the engineering, uh, so to speak, of the of the designs, which is something I usually try to spend a lot of time making sure that I have um, pretty solid.
I think I will throw an additional cuff in there. Yep, I like that better. See, now you can see there's a right hand, there's a left hand. Ah, okay. Um, much better. Uh, this is too short. His thing goes almost down to his ankle. Uh, and while I do want to draw attention to the, uh, to the peg leg, I don't want to draw attention to the peg leg at the expense of the ostentatious nature of the, the outfit that he's, he's wearing here. Because uh, if there's anything the, uh, the Spaniards, uh, are meant to convey is sort of this old world decadence, uh, contrasted with the, uh, the hodgepodge you know, assimilation of a, you know, a dozen different cultures that the new world comes to offer. So, uh, Spanish, uh, Spanish, uh, within, within pirate literature tend to sort of serve as a holdover from the, uh, from the medieval, uh, sort of showcasing that difference between the old world and the new, um, uh, when you have British military antagonists, it usually has to do with the the corruption of the system. Uh, but Spanish, it's not that they're corrupt, it's that their way of life is so at odds with the sort of uh, pre-democratic American ideal. Uh, at least in my head. So, um, so that being the case, you got to show all the lace. You've got to show all the embroidery. Uh, everything else. It has to be fancy as I'll get out. So, um, show all that stuff. Oh, I'll figure it out in the inks. Um, those are going to be fairly nice. Um, so here's that part. Here's that part. Um, and now we show the peg leg. And for the peg leg, um, it's not very long. I want it to be clear that it's made of wood, uh, because that is a story point, and although I was uh, very cavalier with my on-model uh, issues so far as uh, Catfoot goes, um, given that the fact that his leg is in fact made of actual wood, uh, it is important that it come across as so. Show things. Just a little bit of that thing. Uh, still not selling me. That hand up there is the uh, is the problem there. I want it, but I don't. Hand back. Maybe it's that the hand would come. Oops. This way. No, it's that this hand would be a lot smaller compositionally, or you know, from a perspective standpoint. So, whoa, that didn't work. Um, I meant to hold shift down while I was changing that. Okay. Okay, so now that's a little bit better. Let's zoom out, see how that's looking. This is looking okay. Um, again, still requires probably a lot of work, but we're moving in the right direction. Dun, dun, dun!